Hi. Today in the Broadband Academy, we're going to talk about cable characteristics of coaxial and Ethernet cables and their standards. Um, we also are going to uh, talk about the different types of connectors and why they're used. Um, the first coax cable that I'm going to talk about uh, is an RG6. Okay, RG6U used for the underground. We have identification markings just like in the uh, twisted pair section. Uh, we also have it for coaxial markings. Uh, these markings are, for example, here's the manufacturer. Uh, it'll talk about footages. It's going to talk about the different types. Um, and it'll also give you a 75 ohm characteristic. That's the characteristic impedance of this cable, which you'll get into a little bit later in other modules. Also, it's going to tell you uh, the bandwidth capabilities. This is capable of 3 gigahertz. Uh, bandwidth transmission. Um, this cable is manufactured uh, for underground services. This is a drop cable, okay? And drop means it's going to go from uh, subscriber tap, all right, and then buried to the actual uh, network interface device that is connected to a ground block, which you'll see in a later video also. Some of the characteristics of this cable I want to identify. You have your black polyethylene coating. You have a metallic braid that gives the flexibility. Okay. You also have a aluminum uh, sheath, which is your outer conductor. Okay. And then inside here is called the white part is your dielectric. Your dielectric is the insulation uh, between your center conductor, this copper center conductor and your outer uh, metallic sheath. Also on this end, when you terminate this type of cable, you put an F connector, and that's what this connector is called. Your F connectors, get, there's many different types. Um, we can go through, here's a, here's a crimp on type that will fit on this as well. And then instead of using a comp compression tool like this one, you use a crimp tool. Compression tools look like this. Your cable goes in like so, and then you compress it, and that makes that connection with this so that this doesn't come off at all. This type of connector is called the crimp. So this could go on this end, okay, and then instead of the compression, you put it in here and you crimp it. And that would keep this on just like this connector as well. Those are two types of connectors for for your drop cables. The next type of cable that I'm going to talk about is, this is another type of drop cable, but this is for aerial. And how do I know that's because it has a messenger wire on there. This is a copper wire, or, uh, excuse me, a steel wire that gives us additional support. So an aerial transmission, what happens is, or, or drop insulation, this gets tied onto the house and this gets tied onto the pole. Okay, so with bad weather, wind, storm, snow, whatever it might be, it's going to give you that support, this rigid strength for that type of aerial drop. Same type of uh, um, internal components, you're going to have your polyethylene, your, your braided shield to give it flexibility, your dielectric, and your center conductor. The next type of cable is, this is a cable that we use for uh, video surveillance. Once again, this is RG6, or excuse me, RG59, this one is. So the difference between 59 and 6 is that your center conductor is, I don't show this one, is a little bit smaller, you can see that, and your dielectric is a little bit smaller. So when you have a smaller type of cable, RG59, uh, 59 um, then you have to use different types of connectors because your center conductor won't fit on one or the other so you have to use the correct uh, connector for termination now for this type of uh, cable itself I said it was for surveillance so the video signal from the camera is ran through here but the camera needs power so that power is is uh, connected through this red and black, okay? 
and usually all cameras are run off a 24 or 12 volt DC uh, power supplies. Most often 12 volt. And that's what these are. Okay, this is gonna power up the camera. It's gonna go back to a power supply and be terminated. And once again, everything else is uniform. And you can get this in black or white and maybe other colors as well. Um, the next cable I'm going to show here is this is another type of uh, RG59 and once again if you take a look at the end face you can tell because of the center conductor is smaller the dielectric is smaller as well but this is most awfully used um, in satellite installation so in satellite installation you'll have this type of cable because you will have uh, uh, satellites that will have dual L and B and the LNB is a little device that actually syncs up with the actual satellite. So you'll have a couple different satellites that your um, service will connect to, and that's why we run a dual coax. Also, we have, this is a bigger one, if you compare it to some of these other size of cables, it's much larger. And this is an RG11 um, drop cable. It's a lot bigger. The center conductor is a lot thicker, um, the dielectric is a lot thicker, and then you have your outer conductor right here. This is used for drops, but in circumstances that um, there's a long distance drop, you use this because there will be less attenuation in that signal. Um, once again, you're going to have markings just like all the other cables that show the manufacturer, all the specifications usually some footage markings so that they can be documented. These are our types of drop cables. I want to show one more type of cable and this is a uh, slip-on F connector cable. You can see it's really thin and this is going to be used in between di devices like set-top boxes and TVs. One other thing that I forgot about the RG11 cable is the size of F connector here. That's this F connector. And it has a weather boot on there. Once again, this is gonna be underground. There is a flooding compound in here to keep any type of water out. So this will be a compression. It'll be crimped on here and be terminated. One last type of connectors is our, 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 our uh, coaxial connectors are our hard line. And this is hard line. This is gonna be an aerial type of hard line, okay? I will show you a video a little bit later on the different types of devices that are connected to the hard line um, in aerial transmission. But once again, you have your outer conductor, that's what this is. You have your dielectric, okay? And then you have your center conductor. This type of cable is used for your feeder distribution cable. So coming from the head end and going to all the components, that's where this is gonna take place. Why? Because this is going to go a lot longer distances because there's going to be less resistance and less attenuation because of the size of this cable. And that's where this comes into play for feeder distribution. These will be connected to components and devices that then will have these drop cables connected to going to the customer or business. This last cable here is underground, another hard line, okay? This one's got a polyethylene jacket on it. Here's your outer conductor, your dielectrics in there, which wraps around your center conductor, keeping it insulated from this, because if they touch, that's a direct short, and you will not get signal, and you will have uh, no reception, and this will actually interfere with the whole system's transmission. These connectors on this type of cable uh, are a hard line connectors. They have a device that your center conductor goes in here and it gets compressed on so you have a tight fit. They can use these in different types of, uh, this is like actually a splice connector. As you can see, the hard line goes in here. So you can come, so if you run out of cable or if the cable gets broke, that's where a splice comes into play. But more often, these connectors are connected two devices. This is a line extender. It goes into here. It gets connected. And then this line extender will actually boost the signal for the distribution.